people go to gym for different reasons. For women, most of them go to gym in order to tone their body and to have lean muscles. For men, most of them go to gym either to have lean muscles or to gain bigger muscles. Now, whenever you go to gyms, the most common macronutrient that you will hear is the word protein. And they will tell you that proteins are the macronutrients that are needed in order to achieve such body. If you're going to ask what are the sources of proteins, here are the following examples. You have lean beef, chicken, especially the white part of it, then white fish, milk, and many more. Proteins exist not only for muscles, but for other reasons also. And that is the lesson for this third video of this mini-series about biomolecules. For this video, let's talk about proteins. Proteins are biomolecules that contain amino acids linked together via peptide bond. Proteins also act as catalysts, producing antibodies, enzymes, hormonal proteins such as insulin or somatotropin, structural proteins such as keratin and collagen, and act as transport proteins just like hemoglobin. All types of proteins are made from the same building block. We call them the amino acids. Amino acids are the monomers of proteins. And here is the structure of an amino acid. An amino acid is composed of three main parts, which are all connected by a central carbon. One of the side is called the amino group, which contains the nitrogen atom. Then you have the carboxyl group, which contains the C double bond O, OH. And you have what we call the side chain or the R group. The identity of an amino acid is determined by its side chain. Amino acids are classified into two types. You have the essential amino acids and the non-essential amino acids. Essential amino acids include the following, valine, leucine, isoleucine, phenylalanine, tryptophan, histidine, threonine, methionine, and lysine. We can represent their names by using three-letter word or by one word. On the other hand, we have the non-essential amino acids, which includes the alanine, glycine, proline, tyrosine, aspartic acid, glutamine, glutamic acid, arginine, serine, cysteine, and asparagine. Now, what's the difference between essential and non-essential amino acids? Essential amino acids are amino acids that we need but our body cannot produce them. Which means to say, if you need to have those amino acids in your body, you need to eat food that contains such amino acid that you need. On the other hand, non-essential amino acids are also important amino acids. We also need them. But unlike essential amino acids, non-essential amino acids are produced by our body. How do amino acids connect together to form a protein? Let's take a look. We have here two examples of amino acids. Now, amino acids connect together similar to the previous biomolecules, which is via condensation reaction. The hydroxyl from the carboxyl group of the first amino acid will be removed similar to the hydrogen from the amino group of the second amino acid. Then the two molecules combine together to form water. It will be expelled and what will happen is the carbon loses one bond and so as the nitrogen. So in order to complete their bonds, they will link together and that linkage is what we call peptide bond. So in our example, when we combine two amino acids, we form one peptide bond. Here is an example of a protein that is composed of amino acids. Can you figure out how many amino acids are present? We can use this technique in identifying the number of amino acids present 
in a protein, which is just find the amino group, which is the NH, and the carboxyl group, the C double bond O. The link between the two is the peptide bond. So going back to our example, we just need to find the C double bond O connected to nitrogen. And here are their positions. Okay, so we have the C double bond O attached to the nitrogen, C double bond O attached to the nitrogen, and C double bond O attached to a nitrogen. This C double bond O is not attached to a nitrogen, hence this ends the sequence. Likewise, this nitrogen is not connected to a C double bond O, it means this ends also the side of the sequence. So how many amino acids are present? We have a total of 4 amino acids. So how do we name this sequence? Well, we can name them using the complete names of the amino acids alanine, leucine, cysteine, and methionine. We can also name them using their 3-letter abbreviation or their 1-letter symbol. What about in this example? How many amino acids are present? Again, the technique is to find the carboxyl group, the C double bond O, attached to the amino group, the N. In this example, we were able to divide the protein into 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 sections. And here are the amino acids present in it. You have the glycine, arginine, glycine again, aspartate, and tyrosine. And here is its name using the three-letter abbreviation and the one-letter symbol. What about in this example? Can you find how many amino acids are present? The technique is to find the C double bond O attached to the nitrogen. So after dividing the protein into their amino acids, how many amino acids were you able to find? In our example, we have a total of 1, 2, 3, and 4 amino acids present. And their names are as follows. Cysteine, histidine, glutamine, and methionine. And here is the sequence of the amino acids using their three-letter abbreviation and their one-letter symbol. Just like what we discussed at the start of this video, we have said that proteins are made from amino acids. And the identity of proteins is determined by the amino acids present in it. Let's take a look at two examples of proteins and the amino acids that they contain. The first one is the molecule of insulin. And if you are going to look at the structure, an insulin is composed of amino acids in their specific sequence, represented by their three-letter abbreviation. If you are going to remove one of its amino acid, do you think it's still an insulin? The answer is no. And if it's no longer an insulin, it will no longer do its work, which is to metabolize sugars in our blood. Another example of protein found in human is the growth hormone. And just like the insulin, this growth hormone also uses a sequence of amino acids in their specific position in order for a growth hormone to exist. And just like what happens to an insulin missing one amino acid, if you will remove one amino acid from the sequence of a growth hormone, then it will no longer be a growth hormone and it will not do its job, which is to make us grow. So to sum up everything, what you have just learned is that proteins are essential to us, not only for building muscles but also for other purposes. So it's really good to take in good amount of protein in our daily diet. If you want to view the videos for the other biomolecules, the link are in the description box. See you in the next video.